بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will be uh, giving some headlights about hadith number 37, 38, and 39. So let's start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. An ibn Abbas radiyallahu an, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ma yarwi an rabbihi tabarak wa ta'ala qal. إن الله كتب الحسنات والسيئات ثم بين ذلك فمن هم بحسنة فلم يعملها كتبها الله عنده حسنة كاملة وإن هم بها فعملها كتبها الله عنده عشر حسنات إلى سبعمائة ضعف إلى أضعاف كثيرة وإن هم بسيئة فلم يعملها كتبها الله عنده حسنة كاملة وإن هم بها فعملها كتبها الله سيئة واحدة So this hadith is about the generosity of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما reported that سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said God rewards the good deeds and the evil deeds. He punishes the evil deeds. If anyone intends to do a good deed but does not do it, God enters it for him in his record as a complete good deed. And if he intends to do a good deed and does it, then God enters it for him in his record as 10 to 700 and many more times as much. If you intend, or if anyone intends to do an evil deed but, and does not do it, then God enters it for him in his record as a complete good deed. But if he intends to do it and he does it, God records it for him as one evil deed. SubhanAllah, this hadith reminds us uh, here of the first hadith about intentions. So we mentioned earlier that all our deeds are linked to our intentions and are rewarded according to our intentions. So this is uh, actually an amazing hadith that shows Allah's blessings and mercy to his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has multiplied the rewards, but he did not multiply the punishment. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this proves that he, uh, that we say, uh, uh, so, so this, this way that he treats us is a proof that he is the most generous, subhanAllah. And in fact, uh, people are um, in this dunya of four, of four types. So when we, when it comes to good deeds, and when it comes to sins, people are categorized into four types. The first type is someone who thought about doing a good deed, but for some reason he did not do it. So he thought of doing good deed, but he did not do it. The second group is someone who thought about doing a good deed and he did it. Now, the third type is someone who thought about doing a sin, but again, for some reason, he did not do it. And the last type is someone who thought about doing a sin and 
he did it. So let's, let's talk about these four categories now. In the first case, we said that th someone thought about doing a good deed. So the first case has the verb hamma in Arabic. And this verb means to intend to do the action and take initial steps in doing so. Though it might be with some hesitation. And about this group, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, so, فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَا اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا So if, if anyone intends to do a good deed but does not do it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record it as a complete good deed. Now, فَإِنْ هَمَّ بِهَا فَعَامِلَهَا كتبها الله عنده عشر حسنات إلى سبعمائة ضعف إلى أضعاف كثيرة. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى will record it if he plans it and then he does it. Allah will record it for him as ten to seven hundred and many more times as much. Any deed we do is automatically multiplied by 10. This is the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it depends on factors for further multiplications. For example, during Arafah, during Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, these are blessed nights, these are the nights, these, these are nights and time when the rewards are highly multiplied. And this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala wa inna fi dahrikum lanafahatin ala fata'arradu laha. There are blessed times in your life, lifetime. So try to get as much good deeds in these, in these blessed times as you can. So this shows this multiplication of hasanat, of good deeds, shows Allah's immense ability to do what he wants. No one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most generous. He can do whatever he wants. So he, he multiplies the reward as much as he wants. In another hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يقول الله إذا أراد عبدي أن يعمل سيئة فلا تكتبوها عليه حتى يعملها. So Allah says, and we said at the beginning, we said earlier that this type of hadith, when when it starts with Allah says, uh, it's called hadith Qudsi, and we do not consider it Quran. We cannot pray with it in our prayer. We cannot say it in the prayer. But it's not the, uh, uh, the actions of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, or the words of him or anything that defines the hadith itself. It is hadith Qudsi that the idea is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the words are say, of Sayyidina Muhammad. So in the other hadith that I just mentioned that Allah says, if my slave intends to do a bad deed, then all angels do not write it until he does it. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he does it, then write it as it is. But if he refrains from doing it for my sake, for my sake, then write it as a good deed. So, إذا أراد عبدي أن يعمل سيئة فلا تكتبوها عليه حتى يعملها. فإن عملها فكتبوها بمثلها. So, if he does the bad, the, the, the bad deed, write it as one, one uh, bad deed. 
وإن تركها من أجلي and if he leaves it only for my sin, for my 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 sake, if he refrains from doing it only for my sake, then write it as a good deed. So it will not be considered a bad deed, but it will be considered a good deed because he did not do it for Allah's sake. وإذا أراد أن يعمل حسنة فلم يعملها فاكتبوها له حسنة. On the other hand, if he intends to do a good deed but does not do it, then write, write it as a good deed. Write it in his record as a good deed. فإن عملها فاكتبوها له بعشر أمثالها إلى سبعمائة. And if he does it, then write it for him in his record as 10 good deeds up to 700 times. Ultimate generosity. Okay, we go back to our hadith. Now, وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا if anyone intends to do an evil deed and does not do it, then Allah enters it for him in his record as a complete good deed. إِنَّمَا تَرَكَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِي So he did not do it just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just for the sake of Allah, nothing else. So he intended to do the action, but then he remembered that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record it for him as a sin. So he stopped. He refrained from doing it. And he stopped only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this person will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for complying to his orders. But uh, the one who is forced uh, not to do it, not to do the, uh, the sin, any, if someone forced someone else who intended to do the, uh, the bad sin, he, so he is forced by someone not to do it and abstain from doing it for the sake of people, he will not be rewarded with, with good deeds but also will not have any sins recorded for him. Ibn Rajab anhu said, if he intends to do a sin and uh, uh, he did not do it out of fear of the people or out of showing off in front of them, then he is punished for leaving it for, for, for this intention. This is because uh, prioritizing the fear of the creation over the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haram. And similarly, intending to show off in front of people is haram. And when it is connected to leaving a sin for their sake, then he is punished also for leaving that sin. SubhanAllah, everything is related to intentions. So we have, we have to know that. Going back to the first hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ So all our actions are connected with the intention. So what is our intention when we do when we do something? This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would look at, at our actions. So if he intends to do it and he does it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record it for him as one evil deed. Now always remember not, uh, not to say, 
oh, this is uh, a small thing, a small sin. It's okay to do it. Then I will, I will do istighfar and I will pray. I will pay sadaqa. No, don't do that. Don't say this is a small sin or this is a big sin or this is a major sin. Do not belittle any sin. You know why? Do not belittle the sin, but look at whom you disobeyed. And look at whom you obeyed. You disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you obeyed shaitan, who whispered to you and you followed him. You followed his words. So always remember that shaitan has promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to keep deviating his creation, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the day of judgment. That was his, his promise when he was kicked out of Jannah. So do not be his prey. Do not listen to him. Do not obey him and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember always that shaitan will not whisper to the doomed and to the bad people because he already knows that they are in hellfire. But he wants to whisper to the good ones to make them go astray. So the important lesson uh, of this hadith is that we have to be observant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's watching over us. All of our deeds, our words, our looks, our um, uh, our way that we go uh, through, everything is recorded and we will be held accountable on the day of judgment. So we have to train ourselves to always think about our deeds and we have to intend to do good all the time. We always have to remember that Allah is with us, that we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we want to be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about in the, on the day after, anhum wa an. He is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. So those are the group of winners. Those are the people of Allah whom, who are the winners on the day of judgment. Now moving to the uh, next hadith. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى قال من عاد لي وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب وما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضت عليه ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمع سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها وإن سألني لأعطينه so, Abu Hurairah reported that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is again hadith Qudsi, because the Messenger of Allah said, Allah the Exalted has said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, I will declare war against him who shows hostility to a pious worshipper of mine, to a friend of mine. And the most beloved thing with which my slave comes near to me is what I have enjoined upon him. And my slave keeps on coming close to me through performing nawafil. And often means prayer, uh, praying or doing extra deeds beside what is obligatory. So he would do that until I love him. And when I love him, 
I become his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his leg with which he walks. And if he asks something from me, I give him. And if he asks my protection, I protect him. A very interesting, a very, a very uh, generous hadith. Subhanallah. The friends of Allah, who are they? Are the ones who follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones whom Allah loves. And this hadith uh, describes the protection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the friends of Allah, to his friends. Allah says in Surah Yunus, uh, in Ayahs uh, 62 to 64, Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqun. لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة لا تبديل لكلمات الله ذلك هو الفوز العظيم Unquestionably for the friends of Allah there will be no fear concerning them nor will they grieve Those are the ones who believed and feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For them are good tidings. There, there, there is the good news in the worldly life and in the hereafter. No change. There is no change. Uh, is there to the words of Allah? That is what's the great accomplishment. So these are the. Friends of Allah that he mentioned in Al Quran al Kareem. They fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all their deeds are connected to their being fearful of Allah and to their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, Allah is saying, be, beware of harming my slaves. Beware of harming my friends. Now, in fact, we have to be aware of harming Allah's slaves in general, because we don't know who his friends are. Well, some of them are known, but most of Allah, Allah's friends are hidden. So you don't want to fall into the category of those uh, against whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared war. Because anyone who uh, harms Allah's friends, Allah declares war against him. So for this, we have to increase in purifying our hearts. We have to increase in carrying out many righteous actions so that we may be of the friends of Allah. So we will be away from those who harm the friends of Allah and inshallah, we will be of the friends of Allah. In fact, the hadith gives us uh, the methodology of how to become one of the friends of Allah. And it also gives us the consequences of being from the friends of Allah. So the rest of the hadith gives us this methodology and talks about these consequences. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two levels of his friends in this hadith. So the first, the first one, وما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضت عليه. And the most beloved thing with which my slave comes nearer to me is what I have enjoined upon him. So someone 
uh, comes closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by uh, uh, following the farad, by following the obligations. So those who draw closer to him by fulfilling the obligatory actions, this is who this group is. So by performing the prayers, by fasting, giving zakat, giving sadaqah, going to hajj. So this is the first group, fulfilling the obligatory actions. Now the second group is وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبُّهُ so the second level, the second group includes those who draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by carrying out recommended actions, extra actions, by doing extra good deeds besides the obligatory ones. This group includes the ones who are foremost in doing good deeds. So, uh, to be all the friends of Allah, we have to strive to attain the love of Allah by fulfilling the obligations and by increasing in the recommended actions. Now, if we ask ourselves, um, what are the benefits of doing the recommended actions? So why we don't just stop at the obligations? Why we stop at the farad? Why do we do sunnahs? Why do we do the extras? In fact, the, the, the recommended actions are uh, but means of safeguarding the obligations. Uh, so, for example, fasting the six days of Shawwal, so six days after Ramadan when we fast them, this is an example of doing recommended actions. Also, doing the recommended actions before the obligatory ones help us prepare ourselves for the obligatory actions. How is this happening? So, for example, when we pray uh, the sunnah before we pray forod, then we are preparing ourselves to be present while we are preparing, uh, while we are praying the fard. So the first one was uh, uh, to do the, uh, to, to safeguard the obligation, to safeguard the uh, fard. The second one is to prepare ourselves for the fard. Now, one more thing, uh, doing recommended actions after the obligatory ones help in making up for the shortcomings in the obligatory action. For example, when we, when we pray, when we pay sadaqatul fitr after fasting, why do we do this? Why do we pay sadaqah after the, uh, b uh, before Eid, after, after the month of Ramadan? This amends, this sadaqah, amends any small mistakes that happened during fasting that we, don't, we didn't pay attention to or that we did not know of. Now, the, uh, if we want to go to the last section of this hadith, so the end section uh, here uh, is the consequence, talks about the consequence of drawing closer with both the obligations and the recommended actions. Now, if we want to look at the interpretation of these words, of the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntu sam'ahu alladhi yasma'u bih. I become he, his hearing. Wa basarahu alladhi yubsiru bih. Sight. Wa yadahu alladhi yabtishu biha. Hand. Wa rijlahu alladhi yamshi biha. Foot. Wa in sa'alani la u'atiyanna. If he asks me, I will give. Wa la in sa'adhani la u'aizanna. And if he asks refuge in me, uh, then I will, I will protect him. What does this mean? This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide us in everything we do, everything we hear, everything we look at. So we hear, 
we we do only the righteous things we do we hear only the halal things we look at the halal we look we don't look at anything that allah doesn't want us to look at we don't go to any places that allah doesn't want us to go to so if we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will give us and if we make dua then he will answer our dua and if we seek refuge in him he will protect us there is one point here that we have to pay attention to it's the unanswered dua sometimes we make dua uh, a lot of dua and our dua m- might not be answered so this does not mean that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love us no and answered duas have several meanings the first one is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented a bad thing from happening to us because of the dua that we make and then the unanswered dua that we think it is unanswered it was saved for us to the day after and the reward will be will be immense on the day after so another thing is that which is very interesting that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone calls allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah loves that person then he will say to the angels don't give him what he ask what he is asking for i keep i love to keep hearing the voice of this of this person but if someone who is not loved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he asks for anything then allah would say give it to him i don't want to hear his voice and this happens actually especially for the non believers that we see that most of the non believers live in live very happy life to their uh, thinking so everything they want they have whatever they want they have but this is their dunya so th- this is their reward in the dunya but they will be punished in the day after so we have to understand what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we have to understand what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping for us so allah will be uh, the protector of our hearing he will be the protector of our seeing of our path of uh, of everything that we do so everything we hear we see etc will be connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so our heart will be rejecting anything bad because it's already connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you are connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong you will be able to 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 know which path to follow you will be you will you will love the path of goodness and you will hate the path of bad things so with this uh, doing this when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the our hearing our seeing our uh, our path our everything then we will reach the state of ihsan we know that allah is with us even if we don't see him but allah is with us he is the one who is protecting us now uh, moving to the last hadith of today uh, an ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala inna allah tajawaza li an ummati al khata wa an nisyana wa ma stukrihu alayhi so this hadith talks about overlooked matters on the authority of ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma that the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said verily 
Allah has pardoned or Allah ha, uh, has been lenient, lenient with my ummah for me. So he's been lenient uh, with their mistakes, their forgetfulness, and anything which they have been forced to do under pressure or under force. Again, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith establishes the principle that the religion came to remove harm and establishes the special virtues given to this nation. Because the previous, previous nations were held accountable for, for everything that they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of treating us like he treated the previous nations. But because of his love for his beloved messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because of his love for, for him, he shows mercy for us. We, we, the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that on the day of judgment, Everyone wishes, even the, uh, the prophets wish that they are of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So mistakes, which are uh, the first things that uh, they are overlooked, mistakes are divided into several categories. Those towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and those towards others, and those towards ourselves. So there is a hadith uh, that, mm, there is a dua actually, that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that, Ya Allah, we want you to forgive us for everything that we did uh, towards you for all the mistakes that we were we did uh, towards you, and we want you to uh, take over the uh, mistakes that we did towards others that which which we did not know about, and which we did not pay back, which we did not ask for uh, forgiveness from from people. So these are the overlooked mistakes that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover for us. Now, what is for, forgetfulness and nisyan? Forgetfulness is when, when you know the ruling, but you forget at the time of carrying out the action. Again, when it comes to the rights of uh, the community and individuals, even if you forget, you are still held accountable by them if they do not forgive you. And that's why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always on and on and on that, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive us for the things that we know and things that we don't know that we have done or the things that we forgot that we have done. And the last thing that uh, Allah subhanahu wa this uh, uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in this hadith is the person is being forced to do the action. So this is وَمَسْتُكْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ So the person did not do it intentionally, but he was forced to do this action. And for the person who is being forced to do an action must not be content with the action. And he must lack the capability of repelling the person forcing him. So he is oppressed. And the, uh, the first example in, uh, from the first examples in uh, Islam was the story of Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir when uh, Quraysh uh, uh, started to torture the Muslims. Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir was tortured to the point that he said the word of kufr, that he mentioned the 
uh, idols in a good way. And he was very sorry for that. And he, he couldn't face Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for that. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comforted him that you, Ya Ammar, did not do that uh, uh, while you are content with this. You couldn't do anything. They kept torturing you until they said it. So Allah will forgive you. So we have to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for overlooking mistakes, forgetfulness, and things that are uh, actions that are carried out uh, uh, be uh, out by force so which we are not content with this is this is done to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so imagine how how much Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves us subhanallah so always Seek forgiveness from individuals when you wrong them, even if it is unintentional, because uh, they might not forgive you, and they might seek, uh, uh, they might go after you on the day of judgment. So be careful, and remember, if you are forced to do something. Ensure always you are discontent with that action. Your heart does not accept it. So this is the, uh, the way that Allah shows mercy for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We saw in previous hadith how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his mercy by protecting us. Uh, if, if we get closer to him, then he will be the protector. Then he will protect us with whatever we look at, whatever we see, whatever we, we do, whatever we, wherever we go, he will protect us. And in the hadith before, we show the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We saw the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his rewarding of the good deeds to tenfold up to seven hundred folds and more. Ya Rabbana lak alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. Ya Allah, make us content with the way that you are handling our affairs always make us understand how how this life goes make us understand that whatever you decree is the best we thank you for your mercy ya allah and until we meet again next week inshallah which will be the final week of this series I would leave you now by sending your salam and my salam, our salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.